Do not attempt the techniques you are about to see without consulting a professional. You couldn't ask for a better work environment. Here in South Mississippi, it's always fair weather. It's always sunny and bright. We have over a thousand acres to ride on, just trails and obstacle courses, ponds to ride the horses through. It's just an amazing place to be. Amateurs from all over the country are here learning how to work with their horse. They bring their horse in for a week and we have an amazing place for people to stay. We have a Western hotel, we have cabins, cowboy quarters, RV spots. We will come and bunk with us and learn the knowledge that we've gained over five generations of horsemen. My mother was a horse trainer. She was the second youngest woman to ever win Congress in the 80s, and she was Miss Rodeo North Carolina. And my father was a superstar Pasofino trainer, winning national championships and world championships back to back to back, and there were always problem horses in and around. So at a very young age, I had to learn how to read the signs of these horses just to keep myself safe. If I wanted to play around and jump off the hay loft or go through a paddock, I had to know which horses meant business and which horses were safe to mess with and I learned so much what not to do and not to mess with ponies. They're rough. I'm Michael Gascon, the horse guru. I have the amazing job of traveling around the world fixing the world's most problematic horses. You're gonna see all kinds of breeds and all kinds of horse problems. We're gonna train the untrainable, ride the unrideable, and do the impossible. Just like on uh on Nitro Circus. Man, it, it, the opening is everything. It tells you exactly what you need to see. Having never been to a retreat or clinic with my horse before, I really didn't know what to expect other than a little vacation for myself. My horse that I brought to the retreat this week is Lyra Elegante de Haven, and I have had her since she was eight months old. She's a Pasofino mare, and we have um, been working on bonding for eight years. So our goal is to achieve that this week. I was at a Pasofino horse show and um, a friend of mine, Mario Correa, showed me a video of his youngest foal on the farm and it was Lyra. She was jumping over a sounding board playing with her mother and I fell in love with her immediately and went to visit them in Cullowhee, North Carolina. and. Um, She's been mine ever since. So I had my good friend Marcy come in and she brought in her Pasofino mare Lita. And as it turns out, Marcy is currently battling breast cancer, but she's doing it so courageously. It's just such an inspiration that I had to meet her. In November of 2017, I um, found a lump in my right breast and was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer in December. I went through a uh, bilateral mastectomy the day before Christmas and um, found that I have a very aggressive form of breast cancer that um, is called HER2 positive. So we began chemotherapy treatments um, very quickly and um, I am three months into my chemotherapy. I have an 18 month journey total uh, currently uh, to keep the cancer from spreading. So keeping a positive attitude is very important to me. Loving my horse is part of that positive attitude. The opportunity to come to this retreat and have a week of fellowship with other horse enthusiasts, um, to have a week to focus on bonding with my horse and getting back to my love of riding, um, and just having a week to give my body a break, um, enjoying rest and relaxation and fresh air is all part of my um, recovery.
<laughs> well, yeah, I tell you what, when we first came out here, it, it's beautiful. It's beautiful already. But Michael began to tell us about his vision. And, and it's, it's so incredible because Michael is freely giving this information out. He's truly sincere about really wanting everybody to fall in love with, with horses again, especially the Pasofino breed. And uh, he has the skill, but he also has the method. And he began to tell us about his dream and his vision here, and it's amazing because there were no buildings here. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, he's got cabins back here, and then the next thing I know, he has a hotel back here, and it's a uh, fantastic, really great hotel. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had to come back to see for ourselves just how his vision grew, and, and he's blessed. I mean, he's truly blessed. Growing more. Uh, it's growing more, <laughs> and I, I know why. is because Michael's doing it for the right reasons. Uh, the, the people here, the family here are fantastic, the food is fantastic, uh, they take care of you and uh, it's just amazing. It's just like family. I don't, I don't know how else to put it. It's yeah. just like family. It's like being home. Alright, so there's a fun couple that, I, that have been coming to my clinics and they have a hot young Pasofino gelding and they're near and dear to my heart uh, because they're the sweetest folks, Miss Stephanie and Mr. Rick, and they're just the most humble, sweet, down-to-earth people that you can meet. <laughs> That's a good question. Good question, Michael. You might ask Michael, Michael about that. He's the one that named him. <laughs> I came up with Bam Bam. Yeah. Um, uh, I actually found my horse. I was uh, looking for a Pasofino, and uh, I contacted uh, Michael, and they had several Pasofinos for sale. And he just invited us to come on down and take a look. And we rode several, but we found Bam Bam, and he was our absolute dream. It was really tough. Stephanie had a had a Pasofino uh, that she had gotten in uh, in Illinois, but uh, the Pasofino was lame, and we had to put her down. That was a really tough time. But um, you know, I really wanted to find someone who understood the Pasofino breed, and that uh, could show her how to relate to it and to enjoy it. And after seeing the YouTube with uh, with Michael, I said, "Honey." We got to go and see this barn. We got to go down here and see this barn and, and meet this guy because uh, it looks like he really understands the Pasofinos. And uh, we were down here in LA and uh, in, in, in Louisiana uh, and visiting. We came up here with my grandkids and uh, we fell in love with this place. This is just a gorgeous place. And uh, Stephanie, uh, I mean, from there on, it was like she said, she looked at several Pasofinos, but Bam Bam came along and we just fell in love learning curve for me has been just how to basically control that speed, control that hot horse uh, on a smooth, just basically trail ride to do anything, cross rivers, cross streams, go anywhere, do obstacles. What they've told me is they've had an accident with their gelding, so they want to come to the retreat to rebuild their confidence. And what I want you to keep in your mind, anytime that somebody loses confidence after having an accident with the horse, is fear is in the lack of knowledge. When we don't understand why something happens or we don't understand how to prevent it in the future, that's where our lack of confidence comes from. So what we're gonna try to do is educate and show, hey, this is why it happened and this is how we're gonna keep it from happening in the future. And from there, you'll see a build of confidence hopefully over the next week, we'll have a calm, confident rider that can take her horse anywhere and do anything that we ask it to. Bam Bam already knows. It, it's, that horse is trained, he, he is an incredible horse. It's a matter of her gaining her confidence and understanding the skill it takes or what it is that takes it. And Michael makes it so easy. And, uh, and that's why we're here. And that's why we're here. And that's, uh, it's great to be back. Lita had been sent back by two professional horse trainers that told her that her horse was too sensitive to be worked and her horse was too sensitive for her to ride. So she was very put down and let down by this. So what she wanted to do is bring me the horse and give us our chance. Some of the problems that my mare uh, and I have are communication, lack of respect. I've always been told that she's a very sensitive horse and I need to use kid gloves with her, um, which has intimidated me and made me a little fearful of how to work with her. And when she came, Marcy was very hesitant with her very tense, set up very tight, and you could tell that she lacked a lot of confidence riding her because she's had a hard time with her in the past. Well, whenever she rode her, she was so tense and tight and held onto the horse's face so much that Lita, being the tough alpha mare that she is, all she wanted to do was go fast. She would lock out her head and neck and just pull against Marcy, and Marcy would pull against her, and they were having a big tug-of-war match. So we made sure to take the bridle off, 
and get simpler, make things easier. And basically we just started her from scratch as if she was a horse that had never been ridden. Going out on the obstacle course was a big feat for Marcy. She had in her mind that, oh, no, this obstacle course is, is too, too high level. We have stairs and we have a water box and some noodles and she just automatically assumed that she couldn't. And with every obstacle they would pass and every feat they would overcome, you would see them get confident and happy. And every single thing that they got through together, it built their bond together. And you saw them becoming tight-knit as a unit, working together instead of working against each other. And that's really the thing that we really like to see here at Gascon Horsemanship, is just that bond between horse and man or horse and woman. And now I feel very confident with Marcy and Lita going out on the trail together by themselves with no trouble at all, just riding with a natural horsemanship halter. I really feel like this is going to be a fantastic um, way for me to learn how to communicate with my mare or with all of my horses for that matter. Hey guys, I'm Michael Gascon, the horse guru. Today we're here in Poplarville, Mississippi at the Gascon Horsemanship Ranch. Here in South Mississippi, it's always fair weather. It's always sunny and bright. We have over a thousand acres to ride on, just trails and obstacle courses, ponds to ride the horses through. Just an amazing place to be. Everybody has their niche. We have an amazing reining trainer, amazing trick trainer. We have an amazing Pasofino trainer, and the list goes on and on. And when you come here, it's just hard not to get swept up in the environment and the peace, love, and positivity that we have here on the ranch. We have a Western hotel. We have cabins, cowboy quarters, RV spots. People come and bunk with us and learn the knowledge that we've gained over five generations of horsemen. My mother was a horse trainer. She was the second youngest woman to ever win Congress in the 80s, and she was Miss Rodeo North Carolina. And my father was a superstar Pasofino trainer, winning national championships and world championships back to back to back. And there were always problem horses in and around. So ever since passing it down to me, I decided that I didn't want to just be a regular horse trainer. I wanted to share our knowledge, our education, our history with the world so you can communicate easier with your horse. So the big difference in the revolution that we're bringing to the horse industry is not wearing our horse out to get what we want. We use simplicity and communication to get everything that we want out of the horse. And we'll work 10 to a dozen horses a day. And not only do we work 10 to a dozen horses a day, there'll be 10 to 12 different breeds a day. And those 10 different horses are all gonna progress, all gonna play soccer, all gonna do obstacles, all gonna do things that their owners thought impossible to do before. People say, how can one person work so many different breeds? It's because we're speaking the language of the horse. If you try to make the horse learn your language, you may have success, but you're gonna have to make every horse along the way speak your language. If you add a little pressure to yourself and you learn how to speak the language of the horse, then you can talk to any horse around the world. They had an accident and they had a, a crash uh, before coming to the retreat and they said it happened in tall weeds and tall grass. The first thing that I noticed is when a person gets a real, something that shakes up their mind, something that really breaks down their confidence, they get tense and tight. So today we were able to work him and he was calm and quiet and she was very concerned that it was going to change if anything touched him. So personally we'd say, okay, let's take this lesson over to the weeds over to the tall grass that's gonna to touch him and he's gonna to have to work through the bushes. So first I went over and rode him through the bushes, through the weeds. Uh, since he felt like we were in charge and we were the alpha, he didn't even make a peep. He didn't even speed up or show any fear to it. As soon as she got on, uh, since she was nervous and tense and tight, you immediately saw him wake up. So many times we have accidents on horses and if it happened in the open field, from then on, we condemn open fields. Oh no, we can't ride in an open field. If it happened on the trail, oh no, I can't go on the trail. If it happened in an arena, oh no, my horse is arena sour. And what you come to find out that it's not the horse that has this opinion, but the rider. And what I'm noticing is before anything happens, my rider's getting tense and tight, which is making the horse in turn tense and tight. Every time that there's a step forward or a surge of momentum or a little change in direction, uh, my rider gets tense and tight on and then grabs my horse with her legs and her core gets real tight. So what I'm trying to do is recreate her seat getting her sitting deep, relaxed, taking those deep breaths, and starting to allow to give the horse the, his face so that whenever he does pick up on the reins, she has immediate uh, contact and communication with her horse. Because constant contact is like static in the communication. The harder you pull all the time, the harder you're going to have to pull to be able to say something to your horse. 
by having a light, loose rein, whenever you just pick up with one hand, oh, yes ma'am, what can I do for you? And that's where we're at currently, just trying to work through the problems of leading calmly and quietly. Um, so far, in just one or two lessons with uh, Michael, I have learned that uh, she has to respect me on the ground before I can ask for respect in the saddle. We were able to ride her around, put a tarp on her back, play horse soccer. Then we got Marcy on and made her realize, hey, if you sit back a little bit to get a little balance in your seat, then you can just ask for left or right. That's all you need to be able to control the horse instead of trying to tug a war. You can see immediately, she got deeper in the seat, got more confident, gave the horse more of a release after she got what she wanted. From obstacles to desensitizing, you started seeing that resistance starting to leave. And as we asked her to do more and more, it's easy for her. And people are amazed what they can do whenever they're not being told what they can't. So of course, since they've done so many things that were outside of their comfort zone, their comfort zone has now grown. We even put her on, on the cutting pattern, put her on the flag machine, and she was the best cutter of the group. Because she's so sensitive and she has so much juice, as soon as she locks onto that flag, she says, hey, I'm going anywhere the flag goes. They were doing rollbacks that were just amazing. I have already learned so much about communicating with my mayor, um, learning respect, her having more respect for me, um, also learning how to relax in the saddle. The person feels safer in the saddle, and because they feel safer in the saddle, they're a more calm, confident leader for their horse. So the big difference in the revolution that we're bringing to the horse industry is not wearing our horse out to get what we want. We use simplicity and communication to get everything that we want out of the horse. If you try to make the horse learn your language, you may have success, but you're going to have to make every horse along the way speak your language. If you add a little pressure to yourself and you learn how to speak the language of the horse, then you can talk to any horse around the world. Anytime you get a chance, you should come down and see us. I heard about you and I heard that you were uh, currently going through a battle with breast cancer um, and, and that you were uh, really rocking it and taking it so courageously and it was what two days after chemo the same week yeah. and that type of courageousness it just really inspired me and it was very um, awakening to see somebody just so brave and so forward like yourself um, I just had to have you up at the, at the retreat well, um, being strong with it's a stretch. It is definitely a journey. It's definitely a battle. Um, there are good days and bad days. Um, everybody has bad days. I'm no, I'm no different. I'm sure you're not either. Uh, everybody's going to face adversities. This one just happens to be mine in this moment in time. Being around my horses, being around positive people like yourself, make this so much easier. It uh, makes it easier to keep my head up, to keep moving forward. Um, cancer is definitely no fun for anybody. I don't want to glamorize it at all. Uh, but at the same time, your attitude really changes how you take some of the treatments and how you get through it. So um, we just put one foot in front of the other and show up and try to enjoy what, uh, what God gives us. Absolutely. And, uh, I definitely am very grateful for the blessing that you and your family have been to us. And uh, when you were gracious enough to invite me to this retreat, uh, I couldn't see anything slowing that down either. So. Well, that's really cool. That's really cool. When we came in on Monday, uh, I noticed that you were very timid on her. Uh, you, every time that she had a, a little change in momentum, that you really wanted to grab off those reins and, and just micromanage everything that she did. And a big thing that we adjusted is your seat. Uh, you were very upright, you were very forward, and this made you very unbalanced every time, every little bit of momentum that she had. Um, what did you think about that transition whenever you sat back and gave her her face? Um, how have you kept it together so well? How have you, have you been so strong with it? Um, well, after 40 years of riding, it was a little difficult to change my seat from that straight up, sit up tight, uh, legs underneath me. Once I got the hang of it, I definitely feel a lot more confident in the saddle. Don't feel like I have to be so hands-on. Um, definitely, definitely think over time that's going to build a much better 
um, core for me so that I'm not rocking in my saddle. It was really cool to see the transition that you had with your mare with Lita, that as the days passed, you were able to go over obstacles, play soccer, chase a cow, do some cutting, do rollbacks in the, in the wide open arenas and go through the swamps and trails and everything and have such confidence doing so. You look very comfortable by the end of the week. Um, I agree, yeah. When we first got to the obstacle course, I looked around and I chose several that I was not going to do. We, we just weren't gonna do those. Those looked entirely too dangerous. And um, as we succeeded through each one, I got a little bit more confident, trusted her a little more, trusted myself a lot more. And with all the instruction of knowing how to sit in my seat, I didn't feel like I was gonna become unseated. Definitely gave me the confidence to do so many things this week that I never would have tried. Stay tuned to see the rest. So we were just able to work Bam Bam, and he's really coming along from the ground. He's super humble, super quiet, and always paying attention. A very submissive horse. And whenever you see a horse that's super submissive with one person, and then with the next person is not that submissive, usually it means the person is not being as assertive or to the point to make that horse believe that they're the alpha. And whenever we were able to convince her and she had that aha moment, oh, oh, it's my mind that's getting him tense and tight, she was able to make the adjustments and they rode him through the bushes, they rode him through the high weeds that are touching him all over, and they realized that the high weeds or tall grass is not the boogeyman. We have to be a cool, calm, confident leader for our horse. And once we were able to get her where she was able to be that leader, the horse was happy to do anything that she wanted, go anywhere at any speed that she liked. And that's the idea behind all of this horsemanship. It's just a crystal clear communication and growing a stronger bond with your horse. It was, it was really awesome. Oh, yeah. Really awesome yeah. to see you from, from Monday, you know, yeah. as the week went along and you just tackling all these big obstacles and, and chasing the chasing the cow, chasing the, the flag machine, <laughs> going on these trail rides, uh, letting horses pass you by on the trail ride, and you just shutting your horse down and saying, hey, if we're going to walk, we're going to be quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's very empowering. Yeah, uh, yeah it, is. it was. It is. To see you to gain that confidence and, yeah. and be the alpha. Yeah. Be in charge and just say, hey, you're my horse, you can do what I say. Yeah. Uh, you will stop when I ask you to stop, turn when I ask you to turn. Yeah. Um, it was real nice to see the, the transition over the week. And she was telling us that, you know what, you, 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 got, uh, you got an opportunity of a lifetime. And she said, you need to go see Michael. Uh, you want to talk about a trainer, uh, you know, all around trainer, not just past phenos, but all around trainer, he's the one you need to see. So we, we spent about a year, I guess, one about a year, and we, we planned a trip because my kids were down in uh, El Paso, Texas, and they went to uh, Louisiana, New Orleans. And that's when we had our opportunity. Uh, and then I said, hey, we're ride. close now. Yeah, right? I'll come right. ride with you. And uh, come ride with you. And that's when we, uh, man, we just knew that you were the, the, the man and, and that it was going to be that opportunity that was going to help us to understand better the, the whole breed. Absolutely. And I, you know, the thing is, is that I can stand back and kind of watch her. And I could see when, you know, she was panicking or when it was, you know, something that was really getting her, her RPMs revved up. But I also watched that come down. And it was great having you there to kind of just, man, I, I, I don't want to say hold your hand, but you were, you were close enough to let her go through that experience. And she came through and just, uh, you know, got control, which was awesome. Thank you. No problem. No. And what the awesome thing is, is you have such an awesome partner here and, and Rick that most of them don't pay attention. They don't they, they don't pay attention. <laughs> if they come, they come with their pouty face and hmm, I, I'm here but I don't have to like it type attitude. And he was just here the whole weekend, very supportive and paying attention the whole time, really understanding. It was so many times that we will watch your life and something would come up and he would hear I would hear the answer over my shoulder uh, before I would see it in front of me because he's been taking it in so well from, from a, a very uh, scientific point of view where he's just comprehending everything we're saying, oh, okay, that makes sense, okay, you mean to do this. And his timing from what he can see is amazing. So to be able to have that, not just to jot it down, but somebody that really understands it right behind you that when you get home can say, hey, I saw this at the clinic and you're not yeah, going yeah. to <laughs> hey, Remember when you said do this? And to have that just with you is just a really cool, uh, extra icing on the cake yeah. uh, because very, very few people get that. Yeah.
um, most times on them to remember. Right. And like right. you said, when you're in the moment, it's hard for that brain to work and control the moment, think about what's happening, be confident, and listen to the instructions. That's a lot yeah. going on. The reason I'm here is this is my gift, and I love her, and uh, this is her love. And I know she loves it, Michael, like you love it, and uh, and you have a greatest love for it. you got a big heart, brother, and I appreciate that. But, um, yeah, that's... Uh, that's one thing that I just I just thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to learn and understand and then go back and yeah. practice and practice yeah. what we learn. Well, I appreciate so much y'all coming out and, and supporting us and yeah. hey, anything you guys will, will ever need, you know you have the hotline here where we're able to answer anything. I that know, I know. <laughs> Especially after riding with you guys for a week, I mean we can almost see it in our head. Yes. Yeah. It's happening. Uh, and we really appreciate having y'all out. All right. Yeah.